Hey, what's up guys? How are y'all doing out there today? Uh, today we're going to be doing a more thorough review of the hand selector books because we did a live view last week and wow, that's a lot of fun. I have a good time with you guys. Uh, it's nice to do a more thorough review of these products where I'm alone with my thoughts and able to hopefully get you guys the full... Uh, the full deal, you know what I mean? The whole, the whole story of this. Now, for those who don't know, the Hand Selector books are a black book, which seems pretty obvious, uh, but they have a special type of paper. It's a coded type of paper, very similar to what's in like uh, poster paper, I guess, if you buy a poster from a store. It's very thick, it's coded, and uh, it's very, very bleed resistant. Check this out, look. I did this whole page, full bleed, and uh, hardly any bleed through and none onto the page beneath it. You know, with regular black books, let me find another black book over here. With regular black books, it's regular paper. And do I have anything in this book? This book doesn't have anything in it, I don't think. <laughs> I guess I'll just do an example real quick. Okay, so with regular black books, the paper is, you know, tends to be heavy duty, rather thick, uh, but you do run the risk of getting bleed through. So oftentimes what you want to do is use a, um, a blotter underneath it. So let me just do a G real quick here. Okay, so here's a G, and I'm going to fill it in right here. I'm going to use what's called a wet on wet technique, and what that does is it allows you to get a much more smoother transition of the ink. So try to go wet over wet lines here. I'm trying to do this quickly so it's not the cleanest job. It's more about the concept, really. So let's say you fill in your stuff here. a little bit more wet on wet over here so you see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is a regular G in a black book. As you can see, even with a thicker paper, it does bleed through. So oftentimes what you'll have to do is put a blotter underneath to collect that excess ink, which isn't a big deal, but that's what makes the hand select a, a little bit more special. Uh, that said, these type of books are good for blending graphic markers, these alcohol-based markers, such as the style file right here, which has grown to be my favorite marker, by the way. Um, so if you want to blend these alcohol inks together, this type of paper seems to be a little bit better because it, it bleeds in and you can start mixing the inks together really nicely. Now, in a coded book like the Hand Selecta, the ink tends to sit on the surface on top. Excuse me. Turn that down a little bit. The ink tends to sit on the surface on top because it's not bleeding in. So you don't, you're not able to blend it in the same way. Although if you can look here, you can get this kind of neat water, uh, watercolor dapple kind of effect with the graphic markers. Paint pens aren't affected, but actually paint pens really shine on this surface. So if you're using paint pens like One For Alls, uh, Deco Color, do I have a Deco Color in here? Oh, here's a deco color right here. Any type of paint pen where you have, you know, a, a paint-like mixture that's going to sit on the surface naturally, it lends itself really nicely to this book uh, because the paper is more suited for a thick, painty substance. Uh, but you can still use both. As you can see, I use the style file to do my fill, hit it with some Molotov One For All with the green here, Molotov One For All right there. I did my shines with One For All. Uh, essentially, when you're black booking, you want to use a mix of everything. All these markers serve a purpose, and um, you don't want to you don't want to limit yourself by one type of marker. So that is a good important thing. Also, oil-based markers do really really well on this surface. I actually used uh, this oil-based Magic Ink 500 marker to outline this. So this is oil-based black over the alcohol-based style file marker mixed with a water-based Molotov 227. As you can see, I'm all over the place with these type of formulas and they all work together nicely. So a little, a little story about the Hand Selecta book. These books were designed to help get people 
uh, you know, confident in their skills in graffiti art. Uh, most of the books start out with some type of lettering basics. This happens to be the Gory book. Uh, this artist Gory from France, and uh, Gory has so nicely uh, blessed this book with a bunch of different hand styles, uh, different alphabets. Look at all these Gory tags. Oh, they're so beautiful. Uh, a really dope throwy on a van here. Uh, basically, the first 25 pages or so is just going to be all these examples of what you can do with graffiti lettering, and it's all through the eye of an individual artist. And like I said, this is the Gory book, my favorite. Uh, you, there's a few other ones out there as well, too. Now, the rest of the book is all going to be blank pages where you can just try out whatever you want. And in the back, there are grid pages, uh, which help you, you know, work on your letter balancing and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. It even has a little date thing here so you can date your progress. Uh, but anyway, so let's let's go ahead and do a little bit of drawing in here. Uh, I, I went ahead and started a little sore piece here just for fun. And we're going to be using the style file, the style file markers. And this set, which set is this? This is a 24 piece set. I have the main B set, which I guess would be their secondary colors. You know, the, the A sets tend to be primaries. This set does not come with the black, just so you know. I believe the A set does. So if you're looking for a black, it won't come in this set. But generally, I don't use the blacks of these type of graphic markers for outlining. I prefer to use like an oil-based marker uh, or a paint-based marker, like the one for all acrylic twins. I find these type of markers outline a little bit better. Uh, you could also go with something like the Pigma Sensei, which is fast becoming one of my favorite markers, the Pigma Sensei by Sakura. This is a pigmented water base graphic marker. These are really, really nice. They lay down a thick line, and I find that they don't really affect the surface all too much. Really nice marker. Can't say enough good things about the Pigma Sensei. Uh, as you can see, I'm not married to one brand. I like it all. <laughs> Anyways, so let's go ahead and start messing around with this. I got this little source started out in here, and I just want to start laying down a little bit of color just to see what it's all about. Uh, so let's start with this. This is a vermilion in the style file marker. Now the style file markers that I'm using right now are the brush tips. And uh, I believe, let me take a look here. Okay. On the long side, they are six millimeters. On the short side, they are three millimeters. The nib is a brush tip, so it's gonna be about four on the wide and all the way down to a one millimeter point. Now I've used a few brush tips over the years and honestly I have never really been a fan of them but I really like these ones, they're really cool. Um, the nib is very soft and very pliable so you can get some very nice uh, brush tip effects with it. I'm a big fan of it. So if you like a brush tip If you like a brush tip, <laughs> if you like the brush tip, I think uh, I think you'll be very happy with these. It's very pliable, which I think is really cool, because you know Molotov makes a brush tip, and I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the Molotov brush tip, to be honest with you. I find the Molotov brush tip to be very soft at the end, but halfway through, it's very dense. So you can't get that nice, soft, pliable push like you can with these. These are beautiful nibs. So if you're looking for that, I gotta tell you, it's a really nice nib. Anyways, enough playing with this. Let's get coloring. So let's go ahead and start doing my famous little middle line here. And again, this is the vermilion. Now, the one thing I notice with the style file books is if you're using a graphic marker in a lighter color, like this blue, I believe this was the sky blue, let me double check here, uh, baby blue, and um, you notice that you're getting some styrations in there. It, with the darker colors, it's not so much, but it's because the ink doesn't soak into the surface. So keep that in mind when you're using these books. If you want to get better coverage with the graphic markers, then I would probably try to use mostly darker colors. I don't let it bother me. I think it's fine. Uh, again, paint pens are really the best for these. So if you want to practice your throwies or whatever, 
can't go wrong with this book. So anyways, let's go ahead and put a little bit of line work in here, just for fun. Uh, what else are we gonna put in here? Let's see here. What other colors do we have? Uh, let's see. What's this? This is ultramarine, maybe a little too dark. Well, I don't know, that might be kind of fun. Let's, let's drop some ultramarine in here. Maybe do some stars or something. Ooh, that's a really nice blue. Ultramarine's a pretty common shade. But look how... My camera is probably pretty high up. I don't know if you can see this, but look how good of detail that you're able to get with this. So, you know, even though the ink, the ink isn't soaking in, you're not getting that bleed out that you normally get with the graphic markers. And I, I think that's a really cool thing about these. Put another little star right here. So provided that you try to be as careful as you can be, you should be able to get some nice detail work with these nibs and not have to worry too much about the bleed out. Now I've been, I've been kind of messing around with a lot of these graphic markers and um, you know Copic is kind of the, I guess you could say Copic is like the industry standard. A lot of people like Copic. Um, but I gotta tell you, I really, really like these style file markers. You know, I've, I've, I've often had times when I've purchased a Copic marker and it just doesn't really pump out the ink. You know, it, it's almost like it came dry. And, you know, when, when you're spending, you know, three or four dollars on a marker, that can be a little disappointing. But I have yet to get a style file marker that comes out like that. I'm not gonna say that isn't gonna happen to you. I'm just saying my experience, I just find them to be much more rich and much more flowy. Uh, they're definitely using a high quality barrel on this marker. This isn't, you know, a lot of the markers are made in China, but they're not using a cheap nib. This is definitely a Japanese nib on this style file marker. You, always, you can always tell when you get a graphic marker with a Chinese nib. They're terrible. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big, big fan. You know, we just got a shipment of these in too. So, you know, how, how all this stuff is with the graffiti art supplies, you kind of have to get it when it's here because the, the supply chain is always really fluid, if you will. It's not like something like Sharpie where they make millions of them. You know, they only make so many of these. And um, so now, now is the time. If you're interested in style file, now is the time to get them. That's for sure. Uh, let's see, what other colors do we have here? Wine red. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, a little bit too dark. Uh, let's see here. What about this green? Bronze green. Bronze green. Ooh, I really like that green. Maybe I'll do my splash with the bronze green. Uh, why don't we integ integrate some Molotov marker into this as well? While we're at it here, let's see what this is. Oh, that's a 1.5 nib. Yeah, let's put some Molotov marker in here. Just so you guys can see what a uh, paint pen looks like. The Molotov lays down really, really nice. Uh, I would say this book, this book was made for paint pens in mind mostly. They just go down so smooth in this book. Mm, I love this color. What's this, the Calypso? Yeah, Calypso Middle. It's one of my favorite Molotov marker colors. So dope. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this in here real quick. And then we'll move on to, uh, I think I'll, I'll start laying in my outline. And then we can do a little splash back and uh, move on from there. Oh man, it's crazy because the Calypso Middle is very much a minty type of green, but over this blue, it almost looks like an avocado color to me. Which is kind of interesting. It's interesting how the light plays games with your eyes like that, you know, or when you have two colors next to each other, uh, it may look different. Interior designers are always stressing about that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, 
I was going to outline this with a magic ink marker, but you know, I've never used the Sensei on, on pieces in here. I've only used it individually. So let me just see how it looks on the piece. Well, that does look pretty nice. Let's go ahead and start outlining that with the Sensei. Oh yeah. So yeah, for piecing, the Sensei does pretty good. I had only just done mostly tags with it. But I think we can definitely piece with it in here. All right, so let me go ahead and get this outlined real quick. I love this song. Such a good song. You guys like Little Big? I think they're better than Die Antwerp, to be honest. Sorry, Die Antwerp fans. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this going here. remember if I was going to do this round or squared off. Let's let's do it more round. Yeah, I like it round. Overlap it like that. You know, I just love just doing these simple pieces like this because it helps me relax. It really does. I think of when I was young and when I quit graffiti. I was kind of angry when I was young and I quit graffiti. And then when I got back into it, I was a lot happier. Graffiti saves lives, guys. It really does. All right, so let's go ahead and get this going here. La, 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 la. Nicely. All right, put this line there, like that. Now you have to be careful with the sensei on here because it's water-based and it takes a little bit longer to dry. So you might bump it with your finger. I think this should be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. There we go. And being that I'm left-handed, I'm really prone to bumping this stuff. There we go. Boom. Little outline here. All right, on the 3D, let's just go ahead and fill all this in and then we'll figure out what we wanna do for that. I love this Sensei marker so much. It's just a nice, rich black. Highly recommend it. All right. How should we do the 3D? How should we do the 3D? 3D. I guess I'll just do it to the right. It'll probably bleed off the edge, but that's okay. I like a bleed off sometimes.
bleed away, homies. Alright, so let's go ahead and fill all this in. Easy as pie. And then we'll have a quick little video so you can see how the hand selector book works. Man, I'm loving this sensei. What were we gonna do the splash with? Oh yeah, we were gonna use that green, the bronze green. I really like that color a lot. And then maybe we can do an outer outer with orange, something that pops. Maybe like this peach pastel or something. We'll put that on deck there. We'll figure out what we're gonna do with that. Mm. Did I mention I like this marker a lot? The Pigma Sensei? <laughs> oh man, what a great marker. It just keeps going, it just doesn't quit. And I'm going pretty fast too. Like even if the marker's full, it should kind of cut out a little bit, but it just keeps going. It's like the little engine that could. All right. All right. Woo, I just hit my palm on there, look at that. You gotta be careful. Okay, okay. Let that dry for a second. Before I start messing with the 3D anymore. Let's go ahead and take this brush tip and do our splash with this green. Oh man, that green is dope. I'm just gonna run it off like this. Let's see, I might have to rotate the book here. I'm going to move my razor blade out of there. Alright, so now we have that sketched out. Let's go ahead and just fill it in here. And this is a lighter green, so it's probably going to do those little styrations, which it looks like it's doing, but it still looks really cool. i got to tell you, this shade is bang on dope it's like a really good avocado green mm. all right let's get this filled in here all right let's get over here with it now now be careful around the sensei with the alcohol marker because it will activate it, it looks like. Even though it's water-based, but... But it looks like when I hit it, it does activate. So care beefle, guys, care beefle. <laughs> care beefle. <laughs> my new motto, care beefle, be your own grandpa. <laughs> right, let me do another layer. So as you can see, you will, as you put more layers, it'll start to look more watercolory with the graphic marker, but that's okay. I like it. Again, these books are best suited for paint pens, but use both. Okay. Oh, I missed some down here, didn't I? What is under here? Oh, get out of here, Molotov Marker. Whew, that is wet. All right, let's see here. I think we're gonna do our outer. 
with the peach pastel Molotov marker. I think that will hit off the green and the blue really nicely. Ooh, got a little drip there. Oh yeah, that peach does very well. Now when you're sketching, don't be afraid to uh, rotate your book around. That's completely normal. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. The Scooby-Doo's gotta do what a doobity-doo do's. All right, isn't that how the meme goes? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and outline this bad boy. But I think you guys would have a lot of fun with this book. I'm having a lot of fun with it, that's for sure. All right. But if you're left-handed like me, be careful, because the ink stays wet longer. So all lefties, take note. Ah, oh, you guys know the struggle, don't you, fellow lefties? My struggle. Didn't this song just play? Oh well. I'm letting YouTube be my DJ, so whatever pops up, pops up. Oh, this is like a, another version of this song, it sounds like, not the original. That's what's going on. Okay, enough about that. Let's concentrate on the book here. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay, so we got that filled in. You do doodle. You do doodle. I see you doodling when you're on the phone. You guys remember that? <laughs> Okay, we're going to take the middle shock blue marker and we're going to outline this. I'm not going to do a full bleed on this book. This is just a short video. I just want to show you how it lays down the ink. Just a quickie. Now splashes are really good when you're piecing on walls, like especially really grilled walls. Um, it's just a good way to, it's, you're basically just making a background, you know, so if the wall has a bunch of tags and stuff on it, and you want your stuff to stand out, you put a big splash on it, just to kind of be like, this is my space. <laughs> uh, what should we do for a 3D highlight? 3D highlight, what's this? Ooh, that nib's dry. Looks like that one needs a new nib. What do we got here? We have ochre brown light. Looks like it's flowing. Let's do a quick little 3D highlight here. Just a simple highlight. Just something to pop in there real quick. Do, do, do. Man, I am doing this so fast. I'm trying to get my speed painting down. 
If I can do more speed painting, I can make more content. You feel me? Do do do. I feel like this needs to go in a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now let's see here. I think I want to deepen up the lines here. And hopefully if this is your first time watching these videos, you just saw me do the basic steps on a piece. This could be translated to spray paint, by the way. So if you can draw this basic little letter thing, you could probably paint it. Um, the one thing is you will have to learn can control. And here's the thing, I can't teach you that. I mean, I, could I guess I could do a video on can control basics. But the main thing with can control, it's like anything, is you have to do it by practice, uh, by doing it. That's, that's the only way, there's no shortcuts. No shortcuts in that. But yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess I could do a can control basics, at least just some exercises, some simple exercises you can do to help build confidence, do you know? Because, you know, these simple type of graffiti letters, you know, it's it's like a train panel, like you're painting a freight train. You know, these are simple old school letters to just put up your name quickly. Uh, you know, something more advanced than like a throw up, you know, which, you know, people like throwies. I get it. They're fun. Um, but this is something a little bit more advanced than a throwy and something that, you know, where, where you can lay down some nice color but still get your name up pretty quickly. If you did this with cans, it would go very, very quickly. I think I want to bring this up a little bit. And here's, here's one of the advantages of doing upside down sometimes because it allows you to kind of look at the, the uh, look at your design a little bit with a more, with a different perspective, I guess, changing your perspective. So let me get in here. You might see stuff that needs a little bit of sharpening that you didn't see when it was right side up. And now I think that E and the S looks a little bit sharper, which is really nice. Now we could we could really chop it up a little bit more, but I don't think we need to get that crazy about it. We're just doing a little simple guy here. So why don't we go ahead and drop some shines. My white marker is looking a little rough. Hopefully that nib isn't too beat up, but we'll give it a shot here. Sometimes I kind of like a beat up nib. It's all good. I will tell you this, a beat up nib will flow the ink nicer. But it won't be as precise. That is for sure. Just take your time, be patient. I like this song. Give me my money, give me my cash. You better pay me, son. All right, let's go ahead and finish up these shines here. Dun, 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 dun. Now, if you're new to doing this and you're having trouble with your shines, generally what you want to do 
is just have your shine be the opposite of what your 3D is. So remember, your 3D is the shadow, so the opposite will be the shine. Um, I've, I've had a few discussions with people. I think it's okay to bleed shines over like that because light does spill over. I mean, right here, probably not so much. You can do like a little tiny one. Uh, but if it's, you know, if it's horizontal like that, it should be fine. Now let's go ahead and drop this shine here. Do that. But whatever, you know, I mean, you can make shines however you want. You know, this isn't the real world. This is like your little imaginary world. You're making an art. Green Ranger, there's no art, it's graffiti. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, tough guy. <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be, man. It's whatever you want it to be. I mean, that Basquiat painting sold for so damn much. Didn't you guys read about that? Although, don't get me started on the art world. It's mostly a big money laundering thing. That's what it is. It's money laundering. But hey, you know what? If someone's willing to pay it, it's they're willing to pay it, man. They're willing to pay it. You know, there was a time when people spent a lot of money on Beanie Babies, you know? <laughs> All right. So I think we're done. Let me just do a little hit off over here. We'll put Don't Be Sore. Use the white. I think the white will look right, really nice. Don't be sore. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Boop. Some some somebody's gonna get pedantic and say something about that. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, and I totally messed up that line. Laughing. That's okay. That's okay. We're just having fun, guys. All right, so there you go. That is a basic little piece that we did using the style file marker and the hand select a black book. I gotta tell you, I really enjoy using them. Uh, this paper takes the ink really well. Let's take a look under here. Let's see what's going on. Look at that. No bleed. This is me. This is me having the page under like that, so that didn't bleed through. Look at that. Look through the middle. Like almost no bleed through. I went heavy with the green. It's almost bled through, but look, it doesn't even affect the page underneath. So if you're looking for a book that doesn't bleed through, that takes the paint pens really well, i got to tell you guys, this is the book to get. I am a fan, a huge fan. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. This is an Art Primo video. Uh, so remember, if you ever need any graph supplies, sketchbooks, markers, spray paint, caps, uh, you name it. If you need anything for your artwork, please give us a call. 206-365-4083, 206-365-4083. This is artprimo.com. I'm GR Reviews. I want to say shout out to TYO Toys. I appreciate your guys' support. I want to give a shout out to Style File. We got these on the site, just a fresh shipment of them. And we also got a fresh shipment of these, the hand selector books. So give us a holla. We got what you need, baby. I love you. Stay up. Peace.